Before this, I made a film about the scientist Lynn Margulis. It's called Symbiotic Earth. You can find it on the Hummingbird Films website. And Lynn Margulis, uh, with James Lovelock, developed something called the Gaia Theory. And you've probably all heard that expression, the Gaia Theory. And the Gaia Theory basically says, on Earth is a system of life, you can call it the biosphere, which maintains itself and regulates its own temperature. And I had been thinking about making a film about climate change, and I said, well, why don't I ask myself, how does the system of life regulate its own temperature? Um, another thing Lynn Marklis always taught me was that if you have a question, you have to go back to the beginning, go back to the basics and start over again. Don't rely on what you've learned up here, and you know, science is building up information. Don't rely on what you've learned up here. Go back to the basics. So I decided that my quest was to go back to the basics and um, learn how a life sustains itself and regulates its climate, what we as humans have done to mess up this system and cause the climate crisis, and what we can do to repair the damage. And so the first thing I, I did is I did a lot of reading and a lot of research, and I put together a list of people who I wanted to talk to all over the world. Um, and then I decided you know, what I was going to ask them, and I wrote an outline for the entire film. Oh, I should add that when I started the process, I, I realized that this could be a really depressing subject. <laughs> um, so I decided to only talk to people who were enacting solutions. Yeah. And I knew if I spoke to people who were enacting solutions, I would also understand the problem. Right? If you understand the solution, you have to understand the problem. So um, I traveled and I spoke to lots of people and I gathered together my, um, my footage, lots of footage, lots of interviews. Um, and then I, I break all this footage down. I break it down into little sections that relate somehow to my outline. And I give all of that a number. So I create a database of statements by different people. Um, and then I start to edit, and I start to put it together, and it's a long process. And But the next question became, so as you can see, this is a story of my learning process. I want to, to, to take the audience through a journey, which was my journey, of learning these things, and kind of in a way, learn along with them, right? Um, but there's a problem with that, because by the time I get to the end of my process, I already know all the stuff. And so it would be rather disingenuous for me to act like I'm learning at just the same time you're learning, right? Um, and this puzzled me for a long time. How am I going to structure this narration so that, you know, I'm not pretending that we're all learning together, right? And um, I write in the journal every morning. And one morning, I came up with the first line for the film. And I believe, like, in a, like a novelist does, that the first line of the film is absolutely the most important. And the first line of this film, which I'm supposed to know by heart, but <laughs> um, when I started this film, about the causes and the solutions to the climate crisis, I had no idea I would be spending so much time looking at water. <laughs> and that statement tells you what the film is about, kind of what the solution is. But most importantly, I found when I wrote that, that I found the key to my problem. And that was put it in the past tense. <laughs> By putting this in the past tense, I'm telling you how I learned it in the past. So as you, if you've seen the film, you'll remember that I often say, and that what was a big discovery for me. You know, so putting it in the past tense became a real, uh, real key for, for me to write the narration. And I write the narration 
I write out a script, but unlike most films, I change that script all the time. Every time I start a scene, because it's I'm the narrator, um, I can change the narration as I'm going along. I can change the narration as I'm going along to make it work with the people. So one of the people often comments how well the what the uh, interviewers are saying weaves into my narration. Well, that's because I, you know, I add it later. You know, um, whereas in most traditional documentaries, you write the narration and then you add it to the narration, and that's the way it goes. Um, so that's kind of my my process of of putting it together. The editing is a long process, and it's um, um, it's very rewarding because. It's all a learning experience. It's for me the adventure of learning this stuff um, continues, continues, continues as I'm editing, um, and as I have to listen so carefully to what everybody has said in the interviews. And of course, that outline that I had in the beginning, I throw that away. I just throw that away. It helps a little bit to get me started, but I throw it to gay away. And I have to let the material itself, the interviews themselves, tell me what I'm going to do next. And the material always does that. It always has some little clue in it. Um, and, you know, the things like you just saw here when she talks about the beauty, um, how we have to change our lens on what's beautiful. Well, that became a theme in the film because she had said it. And so I wove that back into the into the film. Um, so that's that's kind of how I work. It's um, um, it's a wonderful process making this type of a film where I learn all the time as I'm doing it, and I get to talk to people, and uh, you know, um, and it's really a um, wonderful process. And then when I'm done, um, or pretty much done, we get to do the music. Yeah. <laughs> so 